Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bienvenue à la Conseil municipal pour la ville d'Ottawa. Welcome to the Municipality Council of March 10, 2021. Electronic participation in accordance with Section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended by the COVID-19 Economic Recovery Act of 2020. Uh, members of council and staff are uh, please uh, asked to stay on mute unless called upon to speak. Phone and participants may use star six to mute and unmute. Members of council that wish to speak to an item, please use the raise hand feature located at the bottom of participants list in Zoom, uh, star nine for members on the phone. And the meeting will be broadcast on Rogers TV and Ottawa City Council YouTube channel. Participants uh, and their cameras, uh, please have them on you. Uh, to ensure uh, they're centered and as close to the top of the frame as possible. Uh, for those who are able to, please rise for a moment of personal reflection. Thank you, merci. Uh, Madam uh, Deputy Clerk, roll call, please. Councillor Lulov. Present. Councillor Dudas. Ici. Councillor Harder. Here. Councillor Suds. Here. Councillor El Shantiri. Present. Councillor Gower. Please all. Councillor Cavanaugh. Here. Councillor Shirelli. Councillor Egler. Here. Councillor Deans. Here. Councillor Tierney. Present. Councillor Fleury. Ici. Councillor King. Here. Councillor McKenney. Present. Councillor Leeper. Good morning. Councillor Brockington. Here. Councillor Menard. Morning. Conseil Cloutier. Present. Conseil Kitz. Here. Councillor Derouz. Here. Councillor Moffat. Here. Councillor Meehan. Here. Councillor Hubley. Here. Mayor Watson. You see. You have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Great, uh, thank you. A confirmation of minutes, adoption of the process verbal pour le 24 février 2021. Adoption of the minutes for the regular meeting of the municipal. Declaration of interest, conflict of interest. None. Communications as, as presented. Regrets, no regrets filed to date. Motion to introduce reports. Most important presentation de rapport, Councillor Meehan, please. Thank you. Um, that Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee Report 20, Finance and Economic Development Committee and Community and Protective Services Committee Joint Report 1, Finance and Economic Development Committee Report 21, Planning Committee Report 38, Item 7 of Planning Committee Report 37, Transportation Committee Report 16, and the report from the city clerk entitled Summary of Oral and Written Public Submissions for Items Subject to the Planning Act Explanation Requirements at the City Council Meeting of February 24th, 2021 be received and considered. Carried. Adopté. Merci. Uh, postponements and deferrals um, from uh, there's a zoning bylaw amendment 1705 Carling Avenue, modification de règlement de zonage. 1705 Avenue Carling. Councillor Leeper has a motion seconded by Councillor Harder. I believe it's a technical omission. Councillor Leeper, please. Thank you, uh, Mayor. So this amends the uh, zoning schedule just to make it a little bit more precise uh, versus what was originally presented to Planning Committee. Uh, moved, whereas on February 11th, Planning Committee uh, recommended the approval of a zoning bylaw amendment for the property known municipally as 1705 Carling Avenue. And whereas subsequent to Planning Committee, the applicant requested minor changes to the schedule, which sets out the permitted heights, setbacks, and stepbacks uh, were required to be consistent with the intended design, which are supported by Planning Infrastructure and Economic 
Economic Development Department. Therefore, be it resolved, the Council approved the document eight of the said report um, as amended by motion be replaced by the schedule shown in attachment one and be it further resolved that no further notice be given pursuant to subsection 3417 of the Act. So these are relatively minor, uh, relatively minor clarifications on the zoning schedule. Okay, uh, on the motion, carried. Carried. On carried. the report as amended, carried. 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 A committee reports, rapport de comité, uh, 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 rapport numéro 20 de comité de l'agriculture et des affaires. Report number 20 of the agriculture and rural affairs. Item two, zoning bylaw amendment, part of 7077 Mansfield Road. Modification de règlement de zonage, partie de 7070 uh, Chemin Mansfield. Carrie? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Item three, uh, Flewellen Goulburn Local Planning Appeal Tribunal Settlement. Carried? Okay. Carried. Uh, finance. Sorry, was that a dissent? No. Nope. That was a carry. Uh, Finance and Economic Development Committee and Community and Protective Services Committee uh, Joint Report num Numero E, Housing Services Long Range Financial Plan. Carrie? Yeas and nays, please, Mayor. Okay. Yeas and nays have been called by Councillor Leeper on the uh, committee recommendation. Councillor Luloff. Yes. Councillor Hubley. Yes. Councillor Egli. Yes. Councillor Menard. No. Councillor Derues. Yes. Conseil Clouchy. Oui. Councillor Meehan. Yes. Councillor Tierney. Yes. Councillor Suds. Yes. Councillor Moffat. Yes. Councillor El Shantiri? Yes. Councillor Deans? No. Councillor Kavanaugh? No. Councillor Shirelli? Councillor Leeper? No. Conseil Fleury? No. Councillor Dudas? Yes. Councillor Harder? Yes. Councillor King? No. Councillor Kitts? Yes. Councillor Gower? Yes. Councillor McKinney? No. Councillor Brockington? Yes. Mayor Watson? Yes. 16 yeas, 7 nays. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is item 5, 10 year housing and homelessness work plan 2021-2022. Carried. Mayor, can we record the same vote? And actually, I just have a, a quick comment too. Uh, sorry, who was that? I have a quick comment. Councilor Menard, okay. Uh, is it quick or should we come back? Uh, it's a direction to staff. Okay. Do uh, you want to put up on the screen? You don't have it? Okay. What is it, Councilor? I, I can just read it. It's, it's uh, one sentence. It's that staff develop and distribute to Council uh, by May of 2021 uh, a comparison of the, of the capital funding uh, per capita for new affordable housing uh, between the City of Ottawa and the City of Toronto, uh, as well as GTA municipalities uh, over the next eight to 10 years. It's just a comparison document uh, per capita for, for what people are spending. So a uh, question to staff, uh, is this necessary and how much work would it take and what's your thought on this direction? And do you know about this direction? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's uh, Wendy Stephenson speaking. Um, I can start and uh, Ms. Gray might want to add on to this as well. Um, no, not aware of the direction. Uh, we haven't done this work, so it would take a little bit of time to do it. It's hard to estimate whether we can meet uh, the councillor's deadline on this or not, um, having not uh, reviewed it as of yet. Hey, Ms. Gray, anything else to add? I'm happy to extend the timeline um, for whatever staff need. Okay, well, this is this is more than a direction. It's asking staff to do a fair amount of work, and um, uh, you're going to have to get a seconder. It's going to have to be a motion. 
Can, can we have ace and ace on a direction? Ace ace, yes. no, we don't. We need a seconder first for Council Minard. Mr. Mayor, so. I'd be happy to second the motion for Council Minard. Okay. So, uh, I have a, a question, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council Long. This is a question to staff. Um, we have a work plan established. We continue to try and add things to the work plan. Can staff give us an indication as to what kind of things would have to come off the work plan to uh, to accommodate this? Uh, Councillor, thank you very much for the question. Um, we have a number of deliverables over the next three months. Uh, we have some major reports coming forward in terms of our tax policy, uh, the BIA budget reports and things like that, things that are very legislative in nature and they can't be removed. So there's we don't have a lot of flexibility here to move the work that we do because it's so legislatively driven. So this would be an add on to, to what we're doing today. Okay, so we have a motion by Councillor Menard, seconded by Councillor Deans. Just a quick uh, comment then or question, Mayor, on that. Um, I, I believe staff do have the, the Toronto numbers. So can staff share with Council what they already have in Toronto in terms of their capital budget uh, uh, per capita for new affordable housing? I believe uh, Shelly, Shelly and Saeed have that, that figure. Um, yeah, that, that information you could get from the City of Toronto, Councillor, so you... You and your staff can certainly look that. It's just up. a question. It's, it's just a question. Problem. It's a very simple question to staff: is is what is the difference between what Ottawa is planning to spend annually on the capital funding for affordable housing versus what Toronto is currently spending on capital funding for affordable housing? Oh. Uh, Ms. Stephenson, do we have that information readily available? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we can certainly look it up and share any links that we do find with the councillor. Okay, so uh, Councillor Menard, you're going to withdraw your motion then? Yeah, if, if uh, staff are willing to produce the so, information. All right, so the Treasurer will send you the links to the City of Toronto website. Okay, so yeas and nays have been called on the homeless. Sorry, uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I just want to get clarification. I don't think that that's what the direction was asking for. So let's just, I just want to be clear. Are we going to, like, are staff going to look up the number and per capita and send us that? I'm, we can no, all find gonna, the link they're ourselves. Gonna you the, they're going to give you the tools to uh, to link okay. on the City of Toronto website. Okay, so then let's. Uh, I, I'd like a, a vote on the the direction. Then well, I'd like to see Bernard, the direction. You, have you withdrawn your motion? The the direction was to simply get a comparison in Ontario uh, of what per capita spend is on affordable new affordable housing, and so what the idea was. For Toronto and other GTA municipalities, let's look at it. Let's let's see where we stand in that. My understanding is uh, where we stand in that may may be a source of uh, of input from councillors, uh, and it's important information that we have. We're kind of doing this in a vacuum if we don't have that information. So uh, we want to make sure we can get as much federal and provincial uh, funding uh, for this priority over the next uh, eight to ten years. And in order to do that, sometimes you need your one third as the report says. So uh, we don't wanna leave money on the table. And that's why this this uh, would come back to us and give us that information. Um, that's what the request is, is for GTA municipalities, including the city of Toronto. I think it's okay, a very- So you, you're not withdrawing your motion then? All right, yeas and nays on the Menard motion. I'd urge members not to uh, have staff waste their time on this. This is easily available by going to the city of Toronto website. Yeas and nays, deputy clerk, please. Councillor Luloff. No. Councillor Hubley? No. Councillor Eglay? No. Councillor Menard? Yep. Councillor Drews? No. Conseil Clouchy? No. Councillor Meehan? Yes. Councillor Tierney? No. Councillor Suds? No. Councillor Moffat? No. Councillor Elshantiri? No. Councillor Deans? Yes. Councillor Kavanaugh? Yes. Councillor Shirelli? No. Councillor Leeper? Yes. Councillor Fleury? Oui. Councillor Dudas? No. Councillor Harder? No. Councillor King? Yes. 
Councillor Kitts? No. Councillor Gower? No. Councillor McKinney? Yes. Councillor Brockington? Yes. Mayor Watson? No. <clears throat> Nine yeas, 15 nays. So Councillor Leeper asked that the, uh, the same uh, vote as um, uh, item um, four be uh, recorded for item five. Is that agreeable? Yeah. So Three. Councillor Shirelli, uh, well, why don't we just do the vote, yeas and nays, on uh, the 10-year housing and homelessness work plan. Councillor Luloff. Yes. Councillor Hubley. Yes. Councillor Eglai. Yes. Councillor Menard. No. Councillor DeRuse. Yes. Councillor Cloutier. We. Oui. Councillor Meehan. Yes. Councillor Tierney. Yes. Councillor Suds. Yes. Councillor Moffat. Yes. Councillor El Shantiri. Yes. Councillor Deans. No. Councillor Cavanaugh. No. Councillor Shirelli. No. Councillor Leeper. No. Councillor Fleury. No. Councillor Dudas. Yes. Councillor Harder. Yes. Councillor King. No. Councillor Kitts. Yes. Councillor Gower. Yes. Councillor McKinney. No. Councillor Brockington. Yes. Mayor Watson. Yes. 16 yeas, eight nays. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, item six, housing blitz and request for offers to seek additional temporary accommodation for homeless families. Uh, I believe uh, Councillor Fleury has uh, an amendment. Councillor Fleury. Yes, if it could be put on the screen, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, so it's an amendment uh, that I'm moving, seconded by uh, Councillor McKenney. Be it resolved that committee recommendation two be removed and recommendation one be amended to read as follows. Uh, conduct a housing blitz with the community partners such as Refugee 613 and the Eastern Ontario Landlord Organization to identify permanent housing that is affordable and available for the homeless families, including uh, currently in the shelter system. By calculating the rent supplement, covering up to 80% of average market rent using 2000 as the average market rent cost for a three bedroom to increase housing blitz success in securing affordable units with private sector landlords. The increase in rent supplement dollars would be funded by the unused operational per diem cost. Okay, so uh, Councillor, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have um, staff have uh, indicated that they um, have a, a compromise that tries to accomplish what you're suggesting. I'm going to ask Donna Gray to uh, offer that suggestion to see if you're in concurrence. Ms. Gray? Well, you're on mute. Sorry, Donna, you're on mute. Nope, still can't hear you. Can we help uh, Ms. Gray with her system? Uh, no, we can't hear you. All right, so uh, we're going to hold this item and then uh, come back uh, when we get the technical issue uh, resolved. Uh, item number seven of FedCo's report number 21. Uh, Confederation Line uh, Contingency Funding, uh, Motion Fonds de Prévoyance de l'Aigne de la Confédération. Can we hold that, Mr. Mayor, please? Yeah, if you, uh, any questions will be done in camera, so uh, we'll go in camera. All right, we're going to hold that, and we go in camera at the end of the meeting. Uh, report number 38, uh, Development Charge Complaint, 500 Preston Street. Carried? Carried. Carried. Item 9, Zoning Bylaw Amendment 1770 Hetherington Road, Modification de Règlement de Zonage 1770 Chemin Hetherington. Carried? Carried. 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 
Item 10, uh, official plan amendment, Corso Italia Station District Secondary Plan Zoning Bylaw Amendments, Minimum Parking Requirements for Corso Italia Station District and 818 Gladstone Avenue. Uh, pour uh, Station District, a 8, uh, 8 Gladstone uh, a 933 Gladstone. Councillor Leeper, you have an amendment to the report on uh, the um, Standard Bread Company factory. I do. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Hintonburg Community Association was keen to see that uh, various different heritage properties are treated with the same weight within the uh, CDP. Staff uh, kindly took direction and proposed a, a motion that would do that. Uh, the motion is as follows, uh, whereas the report recommends the approval of an official plan amendment to establish a secondary plan and zoning amendments to implement measures for achieving public realm improvements and provision of the area as a major a protected major transit station area. And whereas during February 25th planning committee meeting staff had verbally supported a request by the ward councillor to add reference to the existing heritage designation of the standard bread company factory and plant bath in the secondary plan. Therefore, be it resolved that council approve inserting the following policies to document three, showing the modifications in red and renumbering the policies that follow accordingly. 41115 future redevelopment around the standard bread company factory building shall incorporate design elements, including but not limited to building setbacks, stepbacks, massing, and public spaces that showcase the cultural heritage of that building and site as designated under part four of the um, Ontario Heritage Act. And 4142, the property is designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act. Any redevelopment of this site shall conserve the heritage value and attributes of the designated building and or site. Um, I would just remind members uh, that there is an active development um, uh, application in place and both the applicant and uh, city staff have been excellent about ensuring that we preserve uh, the standard bread building as uh, as a heritage building thanks and, and just as your you pointed out councillor the property is designated already so uh, thank you for that uh, so on the amendment by councillor leeper and carry on the report as amended carry okay uh, Transportation Committee Report Number 16, Rapport Numero Size, the Comité des Transports, Albion Road Traffic Study Recommendations, Bank Street to Leicester. Carried? Carried. 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 Item 12, Blair Road Transit Priority and High Occupancy Vehicle Lanes, Blair Station to Innes, Environmental Assessments, Study Recommendations, Recommendation de l'étude d'évaluation environnementale des voies priorités au transport commun et réservé aux véhicules. A taux d'occupation élève sur le chemin Blair entre la station Blair et le chemin Innes. Thanks. Adopté. Carried. Carried. Uh, item 13 uh, Strategic Road Safety Action Plan Annual Report. Rapport annuel Plan d'action uh, de sécurité routière. Annual report. Carried. Carried. Uh, patio, patio Innovation, Innovation Program 2021, Edition uh, 2021 de Programme d'Innovation lié au terrasse. Okay. Councillor Fleury has a, an amendment. Uh, I think we'll have some discussion on this, so we'll just go and, and hold that for the time being and finish the rest of the consent agenda. Uh, bulk consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the bulk consent agenda? No, on the bulk consent agenda as presented. Carried. 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 All right, so we'll go back. Do we have, um, I think, Ms. Gray? We can just. Uh... Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry about that. Um, so we couldn't, if it's the current motion, have the authority to do what uh, Councillor Fleury is asking, but we would be prepared to do an amendment to request from the province that we um, change the rules to look at average market rent. Okay, so Councillor Fleury, is that acceptable uh, to you and you would withdraw your motion and staff will undertake to do uh, what Ms. Gray just indicated? Well, I, I'm glad to amend the motion to reflect staff's comment, but no, there is a purpose to removing the second recommendation. There is a name. Uh, and, so uh, I'm not. I'm not quite clear what. Uh, I didn't quite hear you. you know, if you could speak up. Oh, yeah. So there, there are two components of the motion. One, it's which is removing one of the recommendations, which is an RFO for tempor temporary accommodations, and then the second one, uh, and and what's on the screen with the recommendation of uh, of Donna Gray, 
um, I'm, I'm fine with, with uh, amending the wording to reflect what Donna was speaking, but I think it's important. Those are the, the lessons learned that we've heard from our first housing blitz uh, from the Eastern Ontario Landlord Organization and the Alliance to End Homelessness. So from what I understand, uh, Donna is looking for an addition to, uh, to, to that motion to add um, the, the wording that with, with approval from the province or with authority from the province of some sort. So, Ms. Gray, just to clarify, you're indicating that what part of Councillor Fleury's motion is not um, acceptable because it's not uh, legal to do? We, Mr. Mayor, we cannot um, calculate the rent supplement at the average market rent, and we do not have the flexibility in the current funding envelopes to fund that out of the per diem cost. So we do not have the legislative authority uh, from the province to be able to do this. We would have to seek... Um, approval for them to make these changes. Okay, so you're you're not willing to accept um, that direction. I'm I'm prepared to send I, I it to Mr. Days. Mr. Mayor, yeah, I, I am accepting the the addition to the wording um, uh, of the motion, which would uh, get, gain the authority from the province to achieve that those housing blitz objectives. Yeah, we're going to need uh, time to get on the screen, but um, I would, um, we have to uh, listen to our staff. If something is not allowable, then uh, we shouldn't be voting on something we've just been told is not permitted. So we're just going to take a minute and uh, the deputy clerk will put it up on the screen to see if there's greater clarity. Mr. Mayor, while we wait, can I ask staff question? Yeah, you've got your, your five minutes right now. Yeah, okay. Donna, I just have a follow-up to that. Um, when when we heard from Eastern Ontario Landlord Organization and the Alliance to End Homelessness on the first housing blitz, which, which in parts was successful and in other parts were challenging, we heard that some of the successes was at Wabano and, and that's the, um, the leverage, uh, the elements that made it successful. So I'm curious if, if Wabano falls under a different authority and have, has additional flexibility that we might not have. So is it possible for you to clarify that? Yes, my understanding is that they have a specific agreement, that there was a specific agreement made for Indigenous housing with, uh, with Wabano. And I can have uh, Shelley speak to the details of that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, so Wabano receives funding under an Indigenous stream of the Home for Good program, similar to like similar to the City of Ottawa. And if you might remember, we used the Home for Good uh, funding for our Housing First program. So we had the latitude when we received that funding to set our housing benefit rate. So the city set ours at six hundred dollars. I'm not exactly sure what Wabano set theirs at, but there was the flexibility at the time that we received that funding to do that. As you're probably also aware we're also fully subscribed in our home for good funding okay so i guess that makes sense then donna is is really to add to that motion that gained the authority from the province to make the housing blitz as successful as possible so yeah okay that, that's that's I, i'm i'm clear now thank you Okay, Councillor, uh, thank you. All right, so we're just seeing if we can put it up on the, uh, the screen. So Councillor Fleury's recommendation is the recommendation to be removed, uh, which I don't support doing that, and recommendation one be amended uh, to read as follows. So we'll have uh, yeas and nays on whether we remove uh, item two from the DUDAS motion, and then we're just waiting to see what the second part of that would be with respect to directing, I guess, me to write to the province. So we'll just uh, just take a moment. Mr. Mayor, uh, just so you know, there's a bunch of hands that, that are raised just a, a Yeah, so I, I'm just waiting to get it up on the screen so we know 
Mr. Mayor, we were just having some uh, technical difficulties, but we did uh, prepare to put on the screen the revisions to the uh, flurry motion. It'll just be one moment. Okay, Councillor Leeper, do you need that motion or do you want to take your five minutes now? You're next on the, lo the list. No, uh, Chair, I have a, a question of clarification for Donna. I just want to make sure that I fully understand uh, the nature of the objection to Councillor Fleury's motion. If I understand properly, um, the prohibition is against using uh, per diem costs for shelter and, and flowing those into rent supplements. Do I understand that correctly? And can I just ask for, um, uh, you know, which programs, what is the specific prohibition there? What are the, um, what are the parameters around the different funding envelopes? So Mr. Mayor, yes, that is correct, Councillor. We're unable to move that funding envelope. We do not have the flexibility to move that funding envelope into the benefits. So to do this motion, we also have a funding gap, not just a policy gap. And uh, I'll have Shelley speak to the specific programs that, uh, that fund um, our benefits. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Councillor Leeper. Um, so the funding for emergency shelter per diems, which includes hotel costs, comes from the Community Homelessness Prevention Initiative. So it's, uh, it's about a $38 million pot of, of provincial funding. So the, so the funding can be used very short term for housing subsidies. Uh, not rent supplements, but for housing allowances. You need permission from the province to do that. The issue is that it cannot be used ongoing to convert it to um, housing subsidies. So for instance, if our per diem costs were to increase because we house more individuals, we can't use that funding long term for a housing benefit. And you know, our experience is that the majority of our families require that funding um, you know, long term to be able to support housing stability. Um, you know, if you're using it short term, what happens then is that you have to then uh, transition that household, you know, within 12 months to another housing benefit program. We have no other open provincial um, housing benefit programs. Um, so what you end up doing is you end up taking more capital funding from your next iteration of federal provincial capital funding called the Ontario Priorities Housing Initiative to support that family long term and or the next time we get new funding under the Canada Ontario Housing Benefit, you have to move those families over so you can't help new families. So it's really very restrictive, the funding that you get from the province. I think uh, that definitely meets with my understanding of what those specific prohibitions are against using um, the per diems uh, in, a, in a more productive way. Uh, and I, I think it's important for, you know, many of the residents who write to me about um, per diems and, and hotel costs to really understand that there are those uh, very strict parameters around how that funding is is to be used, and that some of the um, the success to the extent that we have success moving forward is to see a um, uh, the funding be able to be used more flexibly and to increase the amount of funding that's available so that we can do things like more rent supplements while uh, still taking care of those who do require short term shelter as we continue to transition away from short term shelter. Uh, uh, hopefully in the uh, in the mid to long term. Uh, Shelley, thank you very much, Donna. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so we now have it on screen. So uh, this is the challenge with last minute motions, which haven't been run by staff, uh, where we find ourselves in a little bit of confusion. So uh, the uh, recommendations that staff are comfortable with, and Ms. Gray, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is the underlying section that conducting the housing blitz is fine. We've done that before and that this is just a request to the province because we've been told the original flurry motion was would be out of order because it's not legal. And then we'll have to have two votes. One is uh, on the flurry original motion that the committee recommendation to be removed. I would argue that we should vote um, against that. I support the Dudas uh, motion, which includes recommendation two. And then we have a separate vote on uh, item one, which has now been uh, amended We'll call it a friendly amendment. Councillor Fleury, I think, is uh, is agreeable to the underlying section. Is that correct, Councillor Fleury? 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, I just have a question. The, the numbers change, so I'm not sure if, if staff can comment on that. I, I believe we were talking 80% and then 2,000, so I, I'd, I'd appreciate clarity there. So, Ms. Gray, or... Um... I'll ask Saeed to clarify the numbers as he worked the numbers against the benefit packages. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we 1850 is the average market rent for a three bedroom, and there are, um, you know, we, we find that there are other options in the city that are comparable, uh, you know, that, that can be afforded at this rent and, and would provide a good, you know, a nice and modest uh, housing option for these families at this particular rent where they wouldn't have to dig into other benefits that they're receiving. So this, this, would, this would top it up and it would be similar to other rent supplement programs that we do administer, but um, better than what we've been recently receiving from the federal and provincial governments. Okay, so Councillor Leaper, if you can take your hand down and Councillor Moffat has the floor. Thanks, it seems 2021 is quickly becoming the year of the last minute walk on motions that don't get consulted on properly. Um, so just to be clear what's in front of us here, uh, the original report in front of us is three recommendations. This merely removes, well, one, it removes number two and then it alters number one. But number two is conduct a new request for offers to seek additional temporary accommodations across the city to provide greater options for homeless families while they wait to secure permanent housing. Now, I fully understand and respect the fact that members of council want housing first to be the absolute principle, that you go to permanent housing right away. But we also heard on the Tabor discussion from someone who was advocating and had the right to advocate on behalf of the residents, that if they had the choice, they'd stay at Tabor before going back to a motel. Motels right now are our primary option. We had a motion on the floor that was going to cancel the Tabor agreement uh, by the end by july which means that the only option for people would be motels or hotels or dorms residents are telling us that they'd rather be at Tabor than than a motel so this request for offers in my mind allows us to get to a spot where maybe we're offering more in these emergency shelter situations than just a motel and now we want to remove that request for offers i i don't What's what's the what's the rationale behind that? I mean, that's that's a question of the mover. Well, I think I think you're asking uh, the mover of the motion. Is that correct, Councilor? Absolutely. Martin? Councilor Flurry, can you reply? Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Scott, for for that. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. So, for me, every time we spend a dollar, we need to spend it uh, with a key to a lease. So. The idea that we need transition for families, I fundamentally disagree with that. So when there's a unit available, it should be a key to a unit, which you're right. The, the families at Tabor are saying, yeah, we'd rather uh, Tabor than the hotel, but we'd also be in, in favor of, of having rights here. So that's why I believe that, uh, that the second one should be removed. Second recommendation should be removed. Anything else, Councillor Moffat? No, I, I fundamentally, fundamentally disagree that Motel should be the only option. I, I think I think Tabor, while it has its issues, there's no question. I think that type of environment offers a better quality of life while they're in emergency shelter than than a motel. And, and let's be honest, some of the motels that we use are some of the shadiest motels in the city. So I think if the RFO can get us better accommodations for these individuals who have no other choice but to live in these emergency shelters. We should be doing much better by them than just sticking them in motels. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor McKenney, please. Thank you. Um, I just want to I I just want to address actually what um, Councillor Moffat just just raised, and you know I think that I think that is the the crux of the issue here. We we did hear from people who. Uh, were able to come out and speak on behalf of some of the families who didn't feel that uh, that they could, um, you, know, you know, would be at risk of, of serious retribution. But, you know, what we heard was they don't want to be at Tabor, but they don't want to be in motels and hotels either. They want to wait for permanent housing. So this says, you know what, let's, let's not go out and look for, do an RFO and, 
you know, have Tabor come back and be the best option or somebody similar and be the best option. And, and we're just right back where we, where we are spending a lot of money on, um, on shelter and not, not on housing. And this gives us the option to say, okay, you know, we, we've already done a housing blitz. It wasn't successful and it wasn't successful because, you know, we couldn't get, um, we couldn't get the, the deep affordability that we needed for families to move out of, of shelters today or individuals to move out of, of shelter today. So we need to go to the province. We need to ask for that flexibility. We need to start doing something different. I think that, you know, the my complete frustration with all of this is that we continue to do the same thing over and over and we expect different results. And it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen over the next 10 years and it's not gonna happen over the next short term with, you know, if we just go out with an RFO looking for a similar uh, solution that we have with, with Tabor and then staff are just continually um, trying to, to play catch up. So I support the, the amendment to, uh, to the motion by staff to go out, ask for ask the province um, for that flexibility to be able to shift some of that funding um, and, and get people housed. We heard that people are willing to stay at Tabor until they are permanently housed. What they don't wanna do is move into another short-term transitional um, housing situation with, with their kids. Um, I just wanna ask staff if, if they're aware of any other jurisdiction that has been able to shift uh, from their per diem funding to um, housing benefits or rent supplements. Uh, Shelly, do you wanna speak to that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I believe um, we, we've inquired with the province recently and believe there's somewhere in between um, maybe 12 to 14 service managers that are using um, CHIPI funding. So the, the you know, whether it's their emergency shelter per diem, you can use CHIPI for, the, for a variety of different purposes for housing um, allowances or subsidies. Um, again, very, very short term, and they have to transition them to a longer term program. What I can also add to the conversation is that the province um, did a consultation on both the Home for Good provincial funding stream and the CHIPI funding stream um, my gosh, probably late fall or earlier this year, time's moving so quickly. Um, and uh, to really, I think they may be thinking of merging those two programs, but really, you know, the feedback they're getting from service managers is that we do need more flexibility in the program. I mean, it was combined and, and given to us to promote local flexibility, but the fact that it is so restrictive around the repurposing of the, that, that funding on a more permanent basis to be invested into housing allowances, I think uh, came out loud and clear in the, in the session that I, was, I participated in. Okay, th thanks, Shelley. That that is good to know. Um, so that, you know, that is the sentiment across One the minute. province, really. Um, just a, another question. We we did do, there was a housing blitz that was um, uh, done uh, early last year and the city and Alliance and homelessness. Um, could you just explain why it wasn't as successful as we had hoped it would be in terms of, you know, um, taking landlords up on their, on their offer for uh, empty units? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, so with my recollection, we definitely had um, landlords come in with rents that were much higher than anybody on social assistance, even with a housing benefit under Home for Good or the Canada Ontario Housing Benefit Program would be able to meet. Um, you know, we also had some landlords come in with, you know, more uns unsuitable arrangements, um, for instance. Um, and certainly, you know, I think there was, there's a lapse between um, a landlord being interested in the program and then matching a person to that unit. It, right. So, so landlords are only waiting in, in what was, you know, a very competitive rental market only, you know, interested in waiting for a very short period of time. Um, you know, not willing to sit on that unit until we can say, well, here's the best person for that unit. So there, I think there's some process pieces we, we need to work through, um, you know, if we were, you know, when we do this again. And just very quickly, if we were able to offer uh, housing allowances that uh, met uh, 80% of the the average market rent, 
Um, would that be helpful in terms of opening up more units for families? Oh, definitely. I think any, you know, increase in, in, in housing subsidy um, obviously creates, you know, that deeper affordability for households where they don't need to, you know, to use their child tax benefit or any other kind of sources of family income. It does provide more security of tenancy, you know, moving forward if we, if we were able to provide a deeper subsidy. Excellent. Thank you, Shelley. Thanks. All right. Anything else, Councillor? Uh, no, thanks. That's uh, that's all my questions. Right. Uh, Councillor Mauve, you have to put your hand down. And Councillor Aglai, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a question for staff. So, uh, Ms. Gray, if um, if we were to pass... Sorry. Uh, pass um, Councillor Fleury's motion, and legislative change in direction. How long might, assuming the province agreed with our request, how long might it take for them to implement that and give us permission to go forward? And what would that do to the timing of the housing blitz? Shelley, do you want to speak to what you think is the flexibility in the time frame with the province based on the conversations you've been having? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, uh, you know, certainly you have to prepare a business case for the province. They need time to review it. You know, I'm thinking that would take uh, potentially uh, two to three months. I, but I think it, it involves a further analysis. If you're going to use this particular pot of funding um, for that purpose, you really have to um, because right now the city is subsidizing that pot. We're not really spending real provincial money. We're spending city money with whatever we're going uh, to do. So I think we need to do an analysis about, you know, what does it look like to, to use any of that money for that purpose? How does it reduce the costs over here? And we also have to examine, you know, what, what, what does that look like if we were then to change our family capacity? Because by removing funding, you, you can't just continue to um, offer the same level of capacity because your costs will increase actually. So there, there would definitely be some analysis that's required. So I would think that would take, you know, between the approval of the business case and the analysis, a good three to four months. So in, if I'm understanding you, uh, Councillor Fleury's motion, if passed, would actually hold up how quickly you could do the housing blitz that he wants to have done and that we all want to have done, frankly. Uh, that is correct. We, we can't use that money for anything other than its intended purpose right now without a business case to the province to ask for, uh, to ask for permission. Okay, so it, it okay, so it would it would take longer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Aglai. Uh, Conseil Cloutier, s'il vous plaît. Merci uh, énormément, Monsieur le Maire. Thank you very much. Um, my question is for um, either Ms. Gray or Ms. Van Buskirk or, or Mr. Syed. Um, we've been working hard for an upcoming application by Hazelview in, in Heron Gate, and it will be at planning in the second quarter. And as part of a social contract, we've been discussing, as you, the three of you, no, uh, housing security for existing tenants, housing diversity that needs to be included in the application. And of course, a major component is housing affordability. And our goal, my goal to have 20% of the units be, be classified as affordable. And Ms. Gray, uh, we've been working with um, with Saeed, uh, average market rent and including supplements to perhaps attain deeply affordable housing. You, you said earlier that it was currently not permitted by the province to use average market rent. You would have to get a, a, a change in the rules at the province. So I'd like clarification on that if that is pertains only to emergency housing that we are, are discussing here, or if that includes permanent housing that we would be looking at um, in um, as part of this application. 
Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Cloutier, what we were looking at uh, before with, with Hazeldean, yes, we were, we were using the average market rent as a starting point um, in negotiations um, to, to find affordable and deeply affordable units with that housing provider. I think what gets complicated here is that we have many different housing allowance and rent supplement programs that, that have different criteria that we, we measure against. So we were talking about the, the Canada Ontario housing benefit today um, that has a different uh, rent structure than some other rent supplement programs that we administer as well. So it's, it's difficult for us to always compare programs as apples to apples. And then there's ways that we could package other capital investments or, or incentives with private developers to get the rent um, from average market rent even lower. But our but the average market rent is usually our starting point with those affordable housing discussions. Okay, thank you. So uh, am I to understand that in perhaps the final uh, documents that will accompany the application as part of the social contract, whether it be a, a separate agreement or as part of the site specific policies that we'll find as part of that application, um, while it will tar it will aim to a, a, as an amount the average market rent as as some sort of benchmark, the documents might refer to other um, methods of calculating the the appropriate rent or the the targets or the benchmarking that we will use. Is that what I'm understanding? That is correct, Councillor. I, I actually I sent the um, developer, for example, a, a set of tables yesterday with um, two different sets of rents and some that were actually lower than the average market rent as well to consider for the deeper affordability. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. And can you just clarify in Councillor Fleury's motion, and I'm not sure where, where it is now where procedurally, um, and I it refers to using, um, it had $2,000, which is now eighteen fifty dollars as the average market rent for three bedroom and 80% using rent supplements to attain an 80% can you can you explain that to me, either Councillor Fleury or or um, a member of the housing staff? How? Okay, uh, thank you. Yep, Mr. Mayor, I could explain it, and then Shelley could correct me if I get anything uh, wrong with this. But uh, under the Canada Ontario Housing Benefit, the the province gives us their metrics to use, and in their case, they give us a, a rent, um, a maximum rent. Uh, of which we could base the benefit on uh, at $1,559 for a three bedroom unit. This is actually less than the CMHC average market rent. So what it means is the households are getting a little bit less than, than they would be if we use that higher rent in order to calculate that. So, so you know, maybe a, a typical household under that, that particular provincial federal benefit might get $860. But if we use a different measure, they may get another 300 above that, which might make the affordability more appealing to them for them to move into a market, a private market rent unit with that benefit. So they wouldn't necessarily wait for an RGI unit or a rent supplement unit um, in social housing. So we could maybe incentivize them to move out more quickly. Okay. Anybody else, Councillor? Th thank you, Saeed. Uh, merci, Monsieur le maire. Non, c'est tout. Merci. Est-ce qu'il y a des autres personnes? Anyone else wish to uh, speak to the item? See no hands. So just for clarification, because this has become uh, somewhat confusing, uh, I just a question to Donna Gray. Uh, do you support removing recommendation two? Mr. Mayor, I think we would like, we would really like to keep recommendation two. We are always striving to have better and more accommodation for our uh, families and temporary situations. And given the concerns, we, we would like to do the RFO and keep that recommendation. Okay. All right. So we'll have uh, two votes. Uh, one is um, the, um, the item, basically number one, we'll call it, and I'll just read it out so everyone's clear what we're voting on. Uh, recommendation one be amended to read as follows and um, as a result of the staff intervention they are now comfortable with this conduct a housing blitz with community partners such as refugee 613 and the eastern ontario landlords organization to identify permanent housing that is affordable and available to the homeless families uh, currently in the shelter system and this is the change that staff have recommended and request the province change the guidelines of the canada ontario housing benefit to use the average marking market rent 
AMR of 1850 uh, as the AMR of a three bedroom to increase housing blitz success in securing affordable units with private sector landlords. So on that carried, adopt A. Carried. Carried. All right, now the next one I'm gonna call yeas and nays. Uh, this is the first uh, sentence, be it resolved that the committee recommend uh, recommendation to be removed. So I'm, I'm asking colleagues to vote uh, against that. So yeas and nays, please, um, on not removing. So if you're, if you, if you're, uh, if the motion is committee recommendation to be removed, uh, I would ask uh, that we say no. It looks like there's still right. a question. Councillor Deans. Sorry, no, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so uh, if you support Councillor Dudas's original recommendation too, uh, we ask that you vote no. Here. Can we have that on the screen, the original recommendation too? Yeah, we'll get that up on the screen. We'll just take a minute. It's there. Okay, so uh, that staff have uh, indicated they want to keep number two. I've indicated that as well. So yays and nays. Uh, and uh, again, just because it's a, almost a double negative, uh, I'm recommending um, no to it being removed. So yays and nays. Councillor Luloff. Nay. Councillor Hubley. No. Councillor Egley. No. Councillor Menard. Yes. Councillor DeRuz. No. Councillor Cloutier. No. Councillor Meehan. No. Councillor Tierney. No. Councillor Suds. No. Councillor Moffat. No. Councillor El Shantiri. No. Councillor Deans. Yes. Councillor Kavanaugh. Yes. Councillor Shirelli. Councillor Shirelli, was no. that a no? No. Councillor Leeper. No. Councillor Fleury. Councillor Dudas. No. Councillor Harder. No. Councillor King. Yes. Councillor Kitts. No. Councillor Gower. No. Councillor McKenney. Yes. Councillor Brockington. No. Mayor Watson. No. Six yeas, 18 nays. So on the report as amended. Carried. 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 I dissent. Dissent, Mr. Mayor. Dissent by Councillor uh, Murray and McKenney and Menard. Dissent. Dissent. Okay. Councillor King. And Deans. Uh, Fedco and report number 21, a motion Confederation line contingency uh, funding. Ms. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Just on a point of order, you had ruled that uh, questions on this would be in camera, but my question is actually broad general in nature, and I believe it is rightfully in public. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see that and then get a recommendation from the clerk. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so this item uh, basically relates to uh, legal costs uh, between SNC-Lavalin and the City of Ottawa as a result of delays. And last week when um, uh, uh, FEDCO met, uh, we heard um, uh, we had a report on, on stage two with SNC Lavalin on the Trillium line. And uh, we heard, although there were pressures, we did not hear that there were any delays. Two days later, Joanne Canelo over at CBC reported that back in January, the city received a 500 plus page schedule update that indicated SNC Lavalin on J January 15th. Um, um, Sorry, councillor. Of a hundred and sixteen day delay, uh, and I am not sure why was Sorry, this council not informed of that delay. Councillor, uh, we're dealing with the contingency funding for stage one. 
not stage two. Stage two is not before us. Well, it's the same proponent and the same problems. Yeah, and I but think I'm sorry. It's, it's, I think the taxpayers have a right to know, Mr. Mayor, if there's a delay. And this this is the board of directors of the corporation of the city of Ottawa, and we need to be told in a timely fashion. So I'm just asking, why were we not told of a 116 day delay that the city was informed of back in January? Okay, so as mentioned, the item has to be before us. It's not before us. It will at some point, it will go to uh, Fedco. We have uh, the item before us now is the contingency funding uh, for uh, additional legal costs. So on uh, this item, if there's any questions in camera on this item, Councillor McKenney, do you have any questions on what's before us? Yes, Mr. Mayor, and similar to Councillor Deans, um, before approving this, I think we do need answers. I think the public is looking for answers. Uh, we were told that uh, that it was a, a slight delay. We've since learned that, uh, in fact, uh, what we are faced with is um, probably something similar to uh, to what happened on on uh, line one. And uh, I think it needs to be um, questioned today before we vote on this. I'm not sure why we would not want to have that uh, our, our questions answered in a public forum. So if I could ask the clerk, maybe or uh, legal services to uh, to comment on that. Mr. O'Connor, what's before us? Mr. Mayor, you have already made a ruling on this matter, so there is no role for the clerk to play. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Menard on this item. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Mayor. Um, it was revealed previously um, that you knew about a lower technical score uh, for LRT and didn't reveal that to City Council, nor did staff reveal that to City Council. You knew, but the rest of Council did not know, is my understanding. Uh, I'm wondering in this situation, did you also know that the recommendation, or the, the report that came in was also a four month delay, but Council was also not told? And if uh, you're going to rule this out of order, then I would simply ask that Council, for very simple reason, add this to the agenda. And let's just have the discussion about why we weren't informed about this. Yeah, that's uh, not before us. We're dealing with the legal fees for phase one. So I'll, I'll, I'll move that we add in the very simple uh, 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 item for this agenda to have that discussion just right now on, on uh, a very simple question from Councillor Deans. Um, yeah, well, staff, in, in fairness to our staff, Mr. Councillor Menard, uh, they're not prepared for this. This is what happens uh, when things are thrown in at the last minute. We have one item before us. I've ruled that we're dealing with the Confederation Line Contingency Fund. And um, Councillor Mian, do you have a respect, question on we, this we item? Were, we were not, right, we were also not, the floor, we were also not uh, prepared for that when it came out in the media, uh, with all due respect. So I, I'd ask, I, I've asked Mian, that a motion uh, be- It gets us five minutes. Yeah, I'd ask that a motion uh, 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 be debated or discussed about adding, very simply adding this agenda item. Uh, it's very simple. Mr. Clerk, uh, in order to do this, would two thirds of council be required to uh, change the agenda? Mr. Mayor, you would require suspension of the rules, which is three quarters of the members present and voting. Okay, thank you. Councillor Meehan. So I, I'll move that motion. The motion should be on the floor. Do you have a seconder? And what is it written out? I'll second it. The motion is to add stage two LRT to our agenda. Okay, uh, so you'll need three quarters, uh, given the fact that staff are not uh, prepared for this item to be on the agenda, I would urge members of council to um, uh, vote against it. So yeas and nays on bringing a new item other than the Confederation Line contingency funding to the- Mr. Uh, Mayor, there are two, three people now with their hands up. They need to be recognized before a vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the procedural motion, uh, Councillor Meehan, we're dealing with the procedural motion now not the substance of the issue. On procedure, Councillor Meehan? No, I had a question about uh, the contingency uh, legal fund, so. Okay, um, uh, well, we're on procedural now on another item. We'll have to come back to you on that. Uh, Councillor Moffat on uh, procedural aspect of adding a new item to the agenda. Thanks, so in the past, all the issues that we've had, we've been able to fully vet and discuss at FedCo and eventually at Council. Um, you mentioned that this is coming to FedCo. Do you, do we have a timeline for that? I just, just, I mean, 
sure we can have a motion to throw it on the floor today but if we have a if we have a process already where this is going to come before us and get a chance to speak to it and have staff be prepared to sit here and answer questions as well as uh, rtg or not rtg i guess in this case it'd be it'd be the um yeah we can ask mr manconi i know it's at a future uh, i don't know if it's the uh, second quarter mr manconi uh, Mr. Mayor, as we reported at the last meeting, uh, as soon as we get the updated schedules, uh, we will then ana analyze it with our team, uh, bring in our experts, uh, and then when we're ready to bring you a wholesome update, uh, as we all know, schedules change constantly. It's a point in time, and uh, we will bring it as soon as possible was our commitment. Okay, so staff have uh, made a commitment to bring it once we have the full picture. Anything else, Councillor Moffat? No, thanks. Okay, uh, Councillor Brockington on the procedural motion to add an item. Just on procedure merits, um, in absence of any advance notice that we're coming today, I do agree all parties should be prepared to have this conversation. And so um, I believe that there is insufficient discussion and debate about LRT in general, but if we're gonna go down this path there should be an opportunity for everyone to be prepared. So I'd rather we park the request from Councillor Menard today, but get a commitment that in the not too distant future, we have this uh, further discussion and debate. So I'm not gonna support the motion today, but I would like to see a greater effort in facilitating this discussion. Thank you. Okay, that's well said. Councillor Luloff, I believe, is that your hand up? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'm just just a question on this. Do we have everyone that we need at the table to be able to have this discussion today? I want to be able to ask questions of the proponents. Are they with us today? Can we even have this discussion? Um, you know, otherwise, I want to make sure that you know we have the opportunity to ask questions of the right people. Um, I don't believe they are because it, obviously, when it's not on the agenda, um, we're not bringing in external lawyers. Is that correct, Mr. Manconi? Oh, your mic's muted. No, we don't have everybody we need, and I don't know the scope and scale of the questions, and uh, so we'd need to have a better understanding of what what, uh, what the questions would be. But we definitely don't have the team we need on, on the legal pieces and some of the preliminary thoughts I've heard. I don't have the team I need here today. Okay, uh, Councillor Meehan on the procedural motion. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I understand the original uh, question, uh, we don't really need to have a whole fulsome discussion, but there are directed questions that have to do with when the when city management knew that there was going to be delay. Uh, and we do have, the mayor is here, Mr. Manconi is here, our senior manager uh, is here. I think they can certainly answer um, uh, questions that we at council should have answers for. Um, and I think that we could get those today. I think uh, we don't necessarily have to get into the nitty gritty, but there are certainly things that uh, that we should be apprised of today. So we know it just like the senior management does. So I would support this motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Cavanaugh on procedure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, stage two is a, is a big subject. It's very, very serious. Um, I agree with my colleague, uh, Councillor Brockington, that we need to be well prepared to have this discussion and see all the material ahead of time. Um, I, I'm not ready to, to have this discussion right now. Um, I take it extremely seriously and I appreciate it being raised, but um, it needs to be a committee where we can even have delegates and, and delegations as possible to to deal with this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor uh, Deans, you spoke uh, on procedure. You can speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to, uh, a point of clarification. Um, when Councillor Luloff asked a question, he asked if we delayed this, if the proponent, uh, he suggested that uh, one of the reasons to delay it is because the proponent isn't here today. So am I given to understand that if we do delay this, the proponent will be available to us? Uh, Mr. Manconi. Uh, Mr. Mayor, unless I'm missing something, I, I see no need to have the proponent here, but uh, that's council's decision. Uh, the city manager may want to comment also. City manager. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, the alert went off, the Amber alert went off and it completely drowned out Councillor Dean's question. I was trying to turn it off, so my apologies. So if you could just catch me up, I'd appreciate um, it. Sure. Councillor Luloff suggested that we didn't have the people in the room today for this discussion. I mean, I think the question I wanted to ask was a very simple one. Why weren't we given the information in a timely fashion about delay on phase on uh, Trillium Line Phase 2 that was provided to senior staff and presumably the mayor back in January. Um, but Councillor Luloff suggested that uh, we didn't have the proponent, we needed the proponent. So I'm just asking if we agree to a delay, will the proponent be available to council? Yeah, the, you know, the issue of whether the proponent's required is, you know, still to be determined. The more important person is our external legal counsel. Sharon Vogel is important because this issue on schedule and any motivation for what the schedule um, uh, notifications to the city are, which are on an ongoing basis, are integ integrally in integrated with the legal discussion. So you can't have one without the other. So Ms. Vogel should be here to be able to give you context in terms of the schedule and why the, uh, the information that uh, staff provided you on the briefing last time is the best information we have when we talked about the, the delay that we told you would be outstanding. So we don't have everybody here that we need right now because the agenda item is not on, on the agenda. Point of personal privilege because my name was mentioned. You know, I did use the word proponent, but I mean broadly, I meant just ensuring that we have everyone here that can answer pointed questions about timelines and things like that. So, thank you. Thank you. So, um, Mr. Kanalakis, if we were to agree uh, to delay in order to allow Ms. Vogel to uh, attend, could you commit to putting this on the agenda for the next FEDCO meeting? I can't commit to that because the work is still happening with our scheduler and uh, the uh, the company that we brought in that we told you about. And um, last time we thought we would need a couple months for that to happen. The next FEDCO meeting, I believe, is uh, early April. And we uh, were looking in, at May at best case scenario for us to be able to bring the analysis. Okay, thank you. Councillor Eglai. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to be um, voting against this motion. Uh, I would think that that um, colleagues who are in, in favor of, of having this discussion want to have it in, in a fulsome and substantive way. They want to make sure that the people who can answer the questions are here, that they're prepared, that their council colleagues also have noticed that this discussion is coming up and can consult their constituents, prepare questions as they see fit. Um, you know, it makes no sense to me to throw uh, an item of this importance uh, on, on the uh, agenda at the last minute with absolutely no notice to have a, at best a half-hearted discussion uh, around it because we don't have the information, we don't have input from the public, we don't have the people ready and available to answer the questions. It, it simply makes no sense to me uh, to do this uh, unless some people don't want to get full answers and, and don't want to give staff an opportunity to properly answer the questions um, to me, which is just counterproductive. So, so I, I will not be supporting this. If we're going to do this, let's do it properly. We have a process, as Councillor Moffat set out, let's do it properly, let's have all the right people, all the right information, appropriate time to prepare for all council colleagues uh, to be aware that this is upcoming and on the agenda. And, uh, you know, so again, I, I think Councillor Moffat uh, got it spot on. We have a process, Councillor Brockington spoke to that as well. And, and I'll, I'll be joining them in, in voting no to this uh, the motion. Again, if we're gonna do it, let's do it properly. Right, thank you, Councillor uh, McKenney, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, will be supporting the motion. Um, people do want uh, answers. Uh, we got conflicting uh, information. We were told one thing and found out the next day that, in fact, there is uh, documented evidence that uh, what we were told um, wasn't, uh, wasn't necessarily the case. So I think that uh, I can't imagine that people, uh, staff, proponent, anyone who's been sitting around not expecting uh, these questions to be raised. Uh, we're hearing from uh, members of the public who paid for the system. Uh, we uh, are hearing from members of the public who um, are counting on this system and they wanna know 
um, is it delayed? Is it delayed by four days, 40 days, four months, 12 months? Um, so I think that, uh, that we can have this discussion today. I think we can ask questions today. Uh, that certainly doesn't stop us from having a more fulsome discussion as we move forward. As a matter of fact, uh, I agree, we do have to have a much more fulsome discussion and we have to have it often or we're gonna find ourselves in the same situation that we were in uh, with phase one and after phase one opened and all of the issues around phase one. And we know what happened with phase two. You know, you know, we, we, we learned after the fact that in fact, the you know, SNC Lavalin had not met the technical requirements. Today we have in front of us uh, being asked $15 million of taxpayer dollars because we have to continue to pay legal fees to the same proponent, to the same um, SNC Lavalin under a different name, RTM versus TNEX, uh, because of the, the issues around, around phase one. So there are numerous questions to be asked. They need to be asked in a public forum. Uh, people who count on uh, transit, who are waiting for it, and who have paid for it. That's not us. That's taxpayers in the city of Ottawa deserve answers. And they deserve to know uh, whether uh, this system is, is on time. And I can tell you, um, looking at uh, the Trillium line, it most certainly is not on time. Anybody uh, with uh, you know uh, any uh, view of uh, of what's happening out there would know that we are uh, not on time, and we deserve to know why that is and what the consequences of that are going to be. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion uh, by Councillor Menard, seconded by Councillor is it McKenney or Meehan? Meehan. Yes. Meehan. Uh, that uh, the rules uh, of, of uh, procedure be suspended. Yays and nays on suspension. Um, sorry, can I wrap up on that, Mayor? Uh, you don't, uh, the clerk just advised me not on um, a procedural motion. There's a wrap up only on motions of subs. Of well, I, I just, no, sorry, I, I, I've I, ruled, Councilor, we're on to the then. vote. I have now. a question then, Mayor. Mayor, then I have a question. I, I, I spoke no to the motion. I have a question. I, I'm still on the speaker's list. So, so the the question, the question that I, I I'm wanting to pose is: I'm hearing councillors say that they are uh, concerned about timing because they want to get uh, a lot of questions asked. They have they want to get delegations here. They want to make sure all the proponents are here. They want to have all of that. Uh, the motion was intended to get an answer, a very simple answer, of why council is hearing information through the media. And it's not the first time, and it shouldn't be happening that way. It's a process question. And People the question shouldn't be leaking to try and clean them up. Why wasn't council informed about this? And, why was the, and, and was the mayor informed, as he was when the rest of council was kept in the dark, when SNC-Lavalin was discovered to not have met the technical score in the RFP? We're seeing this okay. process repeat. And so the question is, the question is, if it's not today for that very simple question that's been asked, uh, that staff should be answering today, uh, then we have a process. What date are we talking about? We can't even get a date of a discussion. Uh, well, the and manager has indicated, Councillor Menard, that he uh, earliest possible is May. So if they can get it in May to the Fedco, they'll bring it to May in Fedco. And so you know, we're now going to have uh, yays and nays. I've called yays and nays on suspending the rules. Pull some discussion in May when we have a simple question in front of us. Councillor Lulov? No. Councillor Hubley? No. Councillor Egley? No. Councillor Menard? Yes. Councillor DeRuz? No. Councillor Cloutier? No. Councillor Meehan? Yes. Councillor Tierney? No. Councillor Suds? No. Councillor Moffat? No. Councillor El Shantiri? No. Councillor Deans? Yes. Councillor Kavanaugh? No. Councillor Shirelli? Yes. Councillor Leeper? Yes. Conseil Fleury? Oui. Councillor Dudas? No. Councillor Harder? No. Councillor King? Yes. Councillor Kitts? No. 
Councilor Gower? No. Councilor McKenney? Yes. Councilor Brockington? No. Mayor Watson? No. I have eight yeas, 17 nays. Okay. Uh, item seven. Uh, most it's hopeful. Mayor, Mayor, it's eight. 16. 16. Yes. It's That's correct. Members of council. Sorry. Um, Councilor Harder and Deans are correct. It was eight yeas, 16 nays. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item seven, carried. Uh, item. Carried. Uh, okay. Uh, item 14, Councillor Fleury, you have an amendment to the Patio Innovation Program 2021. You want to introduce that? We'll put it on the screen. Oui, merci, Mr. Mayor. Je vais le lire puis je vais le, le présenter. Whereas, I will read it. Uh, at, at its meeting on March 3rd, 2021, Transportation Committee approved the right of way heritage and urban design services report entitled patio innovation program 2021 which outlined the initiative plan for the 2021 patio season to support economic recovery and sought renewal of the delegation of authority to staff to give effect to those initiatives and whereas the committee also recommended that council approve a direction to planning infrastructure and economic development staff to provide from existing departmental resources uh, to councillors whose wards contain right-of-way patios, regular updates on complaints, permit compliance concerns, and escalation approach for all non-compliant permit holder, and to update council on the review of the right-of-way permit patio bylaw in fall of 2021 to inform and develop the spring 2022 plan. And whereas an integral component of such updates and such re uh, review involves enforcement of bylaw, either reactive, proactive, and or both. And whereas an integral component of such updates and uh, such a review involves, oh, I believe that's uh, duplication, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so that, that one can be removed. Sorry about that. Whereas uh, the right-of-way heritage and urban design services have identified $10,000 from its budget to provide for one-time enforcement resource in bylaw and regulatory services over the weekends uh, for the duration of the patio season, May to August, primary in the Byron Market and throughout the downtown core as necessary. And whereas in context, in order to extend the enforcement coverage to all right-of-way patios and on a daily basis for the duration of the patio season, three additional resources are necessary and an additional add an additional cost of 30,000. Total, uh, therefore be it resolved that city council direct staff to recover additional funds in the amount of 30,000 from phase three of the safe restart agreement provided the cost meets the definition of, definition of eligible expenses as defined by the province to provide for a total of four enforcement resource in bylaw and regulatory service to give effect to the patio innovation program in 2021. Okay, the floor is still yours. Alors, chairman du conseil, Council member, first of all, thank you very much for your engagement. Like I promised, I was going to work with the City of Ottawa and my, our partners to have a better solution. We've heard this, uh, they were happy with the pilot, uh, project, pilot project. But we want to make sure that any owners that are not compliant should be made compliant. So I wanted to present to the committee to ensure that the tool, we have the right tools and we're making sure that we can enforce the bylaws. The small companies want to benefit from the program, but those who are not compliant to the program will increase the risk. We have to really see what we're going to do with the different complaints. At the time, we've heard about, we've heard the director of the bylaw that they need a consistent measure for the whole season. Uh, I do have a question for uh, Roger Chapman, which might set the, the context um, 
for uh, for uh, for my my motion. So I don't know if Roger, uh, Tony, or Roger are, are with us. Yeah, I believe Mr. Chapman is here. Um, Mr. Chapman, so just uh, following up on uh, committee, and and I want to thank uh, your teams uh, for for helping drafting the motion. Can you clarify um, for bylaw services to be able to enforce a Monday midnight or Tuesday midnight complaint uh, at a right of way patio? Um, how how will that be done with the current resources? And if if council chooses to support my motion. Uh, what what enforcement could we expect on those types of, of complaints? Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, so just so that I understand the question entirely, so are, are you asking specifically about noise or about the um, about the patio violations of the patio permit itself? Correct violations to the patio permit, Roger. It could be a, ver a variety of things. I use noise. Uh, it could be amplification. It could be lineups. It could be a number of things. So. But if there are violations on a Monday midnight or Tuesday midnight uh, with what you're allocated now, how would you enforce? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so this is an integrated enforcement approach. Um, there's a, there is a robust uh, enforcement strategy that's been outlined in the report. Um, we feel that the the additional resources, uh, the resource that's being funded um, through PIDE, um, will help um, supplement the enforcement strategy uh, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night um, for enforcement in you know Bywood Market and other areas as uh, as it becomes necessary. So the the one resource will be monitoring patio activity and any related violations um, uh, proactively. And and Roger, just specifically to follow up, so what happens to um, to regulations or complaints that would come in out of Monday to Thursdays? So the strategy that uh, that was discussed at the committee, um, any violations, any complaints that come in through 311, um, either to uh, directly to uh, court staff or to bylaw and regulatory services, um, there will be um, a, a wrap up on Monday morning to identify where those complaints are coming from and uh, PIDE staff will follow up um, to ensure that uh, you know the, the the three strikes are out policy that's been um, that's been identified in the report. So you know, first violation, they they get a written warning, and um, the the second second violation, um, another warning, and the third violation will be um, you know a rollback of um, uh, of closure times on the on those patios. So, Mr. Mayor, I guess you know just to clarify, my the intent of my motion is for us to not follow up after, but be able to respond to complaints as they come in. Uh, we're extending to 2 a.m. That raises major livability concerns, and uh, it's not simply on weekends. So that's the purpose of the motion. Thank you. Okay, just uh, for clarification. Um Wendy, uh, the councillor is suggesting the funding come from phase three of sa safe restart program. I don't believe uh, there's any agreement on phase three at this point. We only have phase two, is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we don't have a, a full line of sight yet on phase three. We've received two small allocations and we're awaiting an announcement. I'm gonna say a little bit of fingers crossed in terms of where we're gonna get to the end of the year. Okay, and to Mr. Chapman, uh, just to, to be very clear, uh, either you or Mr. DeMonte, uh, do we need this? Uh, we've already agreed, I think, to uh, one extra resource, uh, which will primarily be in the Byward market. Is this necessary from your point of view, and do you have the money in your budget to fund it? Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, we don't have the budget to to fund any additional um, any di additional positions or, or resources at this point. Um, we do feel that uh, similarly to what we uh, the approach that we took last summer, uh, the proactive enforcement that uh, that was done last summer was uh, focused on the the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, primarily in the Byward market. Um, so we had some success doing that. Uh, we feel that um, with the strategy again that's been outlined in the report. Um, that this resource will certainly supplement that enforcement strategy and, and we should be able to um, to address any of those concerns. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions and comments, Councillor El-Shintiri. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'd like to begin by asking staff, I heard from uh, my colleague, the presenter, uh, staff uh, help draft this motion. Um, and we hear that often because we always ask staff to help us draft the motion. But does that mean staff in support of that motion? Um, Mr. Mayor, assuming that's uh, directed towards me, um, staff are not in support of the motion. Again, um, the question that was asked was, um, as far as seven days a week, what, what would be required for uh, enforcement, uh, proactive enforcement for patio seven days a week? Um, the answer to that question is uh, that it would require for uh, summer students to be able to do that. Uh, what we're proposing here is, uh, and again, it's very important to understand that the, the, the comprehensive enforcement strategy outlined in the report, we feel that the one resource um, will supplement that enforcement strategy um, and provide some proactive monitoring. Again, only on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, but we feel that uh, that, that will be sufficient, similarly to what we did last summer. Thank you for uh, for that, Mr. Chapman. Mr. Mayor, we had a committee meeting. We have a delegation. We had business community for or against this uh, proposal, and we have from everyone. We have from our staff. Then today we are faced with the motion on the floor, St and and using the term our staff help drafting it. Where staff just because they help drafting it doesn't mean they agree with it. And, and we have enough restriction, which is we never had before. Tree strike, you, you know, your license would be revoked. And, and our businesses in the community, just to put it in a contact for some of my colleagues, who uh, we have 6,400 uh, small businesses. They employed over 35,000 people. And these businesses, according to the Canadian Small Business Association, 40% of those businesses, either they will shut down or they will barely make it on a loss during the pandemic. Now we are trying to do as, as, as a task force from with, under your leadership, with working with the other businesses in the, in the city across the community, trying to come up with some idea, helping the, the legit, let's say the legit business and making sure we have enough rules and, and, and tool in the toolbox for our staff to shut down the one they don't cooperate with uh, with, the, with the direction and, and uh, the, the motion was presented on a committee. So colleague, please, let's not try every time we debate something for hours with the community, with the stakeholder, and then turn back and bring a motion to the floor of council, where, the, where those people who I like to discuss with them, whether the Ottawa Coalition on VAA or all the executive director of the, of the business area, I won't be able to ask them what they think about this motion. How unfair is this? What happened? We want more public consultation. And it seems every time we hear from the public, we come to the floor and try to overturn those decisions. So uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'm, I encourage my colleague, for the sake of the small businesses, the sake of the 35,000 people who's really uh, suffering in the city of Ottawa with, with, with what happened with all the pandemic and the shutdown and the limit capacity, vote this down. Thank you. Right, and thank you for the good work you've done with the BIA's uh, Councillor El Shantiri. Councillor Brockington, please. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I hope we have a problem in the market where it's overwhelmed and people are coming to our restaurants and patios and people get out this summer and spend their money and feel safe again to do that. Uh, and I'm not trying to undermine Councillor Fleury or the genuine issue he's brought to us today, but I would love to see our city return to uh, pre-COVID levels, knowing that there's a lot to balance this summer. But um, I really uh, want to see us slowly to get back to that this summer. So my question to Mr. Chapman is this, assuming people do come into the market uh, it was very popular. We had great weather last year. Uh, patios were open well past the normal point for the season. And uh, you do your Monday briefings and you realize, look, we're, we're getting overwhelmed. We, we need more resources. I, I'm not hearing you have the capacity to do that, but will the onus be on Councillor Fleury to come back? Or how do you balance 
um, high demand for service versus your capacity to provide that. Um, Mr. Mayor, I think I'll, I'll defer if I can to, to court to answer this question. There is, um, I believe, a commitment to report back after one month, but I'll defer okay. to, uh, to court to answer that. Yes, uh, Mayor. Uh, in answer to Councillor Brockington's question, enforcement is a shared accountability between PIDE and EPS. Uh, certainly, you've seen that for the first time that what we've been administering the program in the last five years at least, uh, we will have that dedicated officer uh, proactively enforcing uh, this year. We know uh, more than ever uh, that we need to balance livability concerns with uh, the ability for folks to, to uh, recover economically. Uh, to answer your question specifically, um, I want to remind Council that the, with respect to noise and 2 a.m., we only get there once we're into the green zone. And this is a, obviously a steep hill to climb over the next few months. Um, so when we do get into that green zone and when right-of-way patios do operate uh, to 2 a.m., we certainly will monitor uh, activity. Uh, we have set up, as, as Mr. Chapman indicated, a very robust and integrated reporting system between bylaw, PIDE, Ottawa Public Health, uh, and we will review the metrics that we get every weekend and, uh, as necessary, uh, pivot our operations. So the motion that was passed at TRC directed staff to come back uh, with the status update uh, one month following Green Zone and 2 a.m., uh, and certainly I would see in that report detailing any action that we had to undertake in terms of adding additional resources uh, should, um, should compliance not be high. Um, however, I, I want to use this opportunity as well to advise Council that compliance is very high historically uh, with our right-of-way patios. Uh, we've, we've had very few uh, noise bylaw infractions over the last few years. We've put an incredible amount of focus on accessibility and our partners have really risen to the occasion. And we're being very proactive with our uh, dialogue already, uh, knowing that the season is just upon us. So we have every confidence uh, that, uh, that 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 positive compliance will continue. Next. I did not. I didn't attend the committee meeting, so I apologize for asking this question. But uh, are you planning a proactive? campaign where you physically go and visit bar restaurant owners in advance of the season saying here's what our expectations are yes we want you to be successful but there are also residents who live within the market uh, to try and mitigate some of that from starting to begin with yes mayor we've we've been having that productive dialogue uh, since the snow started uh, all over the winter, uh, we engaged with the industry, with Acobia, on on what um, what the industry needed in terms of support for 2021. Uh, that's you'll see those those uh, those recommendations outlined in this report. Um, our team, mindful of the very good weather uh, that that seems to be upon us as of today, has been having those focused conversations with our our partners over the last few weeks. We've got a very uh, specific strategy put in place for St. Patrick's Day. We know is traditionally the unofficial start to the patio season. So working with Ottawa Public Health uh, and bylaw, those conversations have been uh, ongoing over the last few days. Thank you. I'm, you know, I, with the announcement that the Canada's Wonderland is opening this summer, the Canadian National Exhibition is planning to open in August in Toronto. I'd really like to see the city of Ottawa plan for where we're safe to do so uh, following of course all the public health guidelines events to get us back on track this summer even small events are better than nothing and, and the success in the market I wish them well and appreciate the focus that our staff have uh, this summer again so thanks very much great thank you Councillor Brongton Councillor McKenney please thank you Mr. Mayor um, I'm not sure how asking for additional uh, resources for enforcement is undermining business. It's not. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, we all love patios. Uh, as we were having this discussion, I actually just got a text from my wife saying that when she was on her way to work, she saw that Pubwells had their patio open and wants council to end early so that we can get out there later this afternoon. Not likely to be there at 2 a.m., but that's more about my age than anything else. Um, but what we're asking for here is just that uh, the same as what businesses are asking for and BIAs, I, it, it, at least in, in the ward I represent, uh, they want us to be able to ensure that 
you know, the operators that are, are uh, ensuring that they're, you know, uh, not breaking uh, bylaws, that they're, you know, not over serving, that they're not uh, uh, breaking noise bylaws, that they're able to, uh, to continue, that, that, that we are able to uh, afford them some, some extra latitude, especially this year. Uh, and going forward, I'm, I'm very pro patio. I, I always have been, but we also have people who live downtown and we have to consider uh, what that means. And all patios are not made equal. Some of them are within feet of residential areas. They're, you know, where kids sleep, where people, you know, go to bed in the evening, uh, at night. Uh, and, and, and we have to, we have to have the enforcement uh, tools, the resources uh, to be able to ensure that we're only going after the ones that uh, are not uh, complying with, uh, with the bylaws and that are not being good neighbors. And they're, they're they, 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 Sometimes, um, you know, we can we we get on uh, a tra trajectory with our calls to bylaw. And bylaw services in this city, I'm going to tell you, is so underfunded. Um, I, I always feel bad when I email Roger Chapman, and I do it daily. Uh, we've got rooming houses that need, uh, you know, um, uh, dedicated bylaw services. This now, and this is this is for the market. This is not for all of downtown. Um, so, you know, asking that, you know, if we come out, you know, if we go into the green, if we ensure, if we're going into two a.m., um, uh, oh, you know, extending hours to two a.m., it's just that we have the resources to ensure that that we have what we need, that residents have the assurance they need, and that businesses that have asked for this also know that we have the resources we need to go after um, the, you know, the, 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 the establishments that are not following the rules so that we don't turn residents against patios because that's what's happened in the past. It's been very difficult to establish uh, patios in, in the downtown. So again, this is asking for additional resources if we get there. And it allows uh, it allows me to uh, vote in favor of uh, 2A for the 2 a.m. Uh, opening. Otherwise, I'm simply not not able to, and I uh, and I want to. So it's uh, again, this is not undermining business. This is asking for additional resources for our staff to be able to do the job for businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Aglai. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, question slash comment, I guess. Um, so I appreciate this may not be in the in the normal um, consideration. Uh, but we're, we're not living in normal times, as we all know, we're, we're living in COVID times. Uh, is there not a role? Um, some of these evenings, well, all of these evenings, uh, for OPS, uh, they have a they have a significant presence on the market. Uh, they're already there. Uh, they're empowered peace officers. Um, so it's it's not an additional expense because they're there. Um, they're 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 doing their patrols in the in the market. And is is there not is there not a way to engage OPS in in assisting and again in these 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 very unusual times um, to uh, to do some of that enforcement uh, to visit some of those bars and restaurants to have that discussion. Uh, around what's appropriate, not appropriate uh, behavior going forward in in light of the uh, change, uh, to me that's a, that's a no cost solution. They're already there. They're they're being paid. They're peace officers, and um, so I, I'm not sure who can answer that question. But it seems to me that that the 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 answer may well be in front of us and at, at a no cost, uh, other than what we're already paying for the officers to to be on patrol in those areas. Mr. Mayor, maybe I can uh, I can uh, take a, a shot at uh, support answering the councillor. Um, Ottawa Police uh, do participate in some of the bylaw enforcement activities. However, um, bylaw has been the lead and has been uh, taking the brunt of this uh, this work on. 
Uh, they generally have assisted by law when the, it's to keep the peace because there, there perhaps is a, an understanding that there may be some, uh, there could be some violence in certain cases. That's been their role. Uh, that said, um, many councillors have uh, come up to me and I will be continuing to have other discussions with, uh, with Ottawa Police. I think uh, the councillor's um, question is very apropos and perhaps they could be more supportive in, in some of these roles, uh, albeit it is generally fundamentally viewed by them as a, as a bylaw first role, um, but uh, perhaps this can be part of the solution. Thank you for that answer, uh, Mr. DeMonte. And, and as you know, as I started my my question, we're not in normal times, and and uh, we all know there's a cash crunch throughout the city. And it just seems to me, if the officers are there, they're already being paid. They have a presence. They're aware of the problem bars and restaurants. That we have a solution in, in front of us that that can go forward without without the necessity of finding additional funds or passing this motion. Thank you. Great, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Leeper, please. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I'll just preface my remarks by saying I anticipate dissenting on uh, item 2A, depending how you want to uh, split the the yeas and nays moving forward in the vote. Um, I will be supporting Councillor uh, Fleury's motion. Sorry, the host muted me. Uh <laughs> Cut Apologies, off. Councillor Lee, for that was an accident. <laughs> um, I will be supporting um, Councillor Fleury's motion. It is uh, a significant distance from the Byward Market where we ent are anticipating um, uh, enforcement and, and, and prioritizing enforcement to you know Churchill and uh, Churchill and, and Richmond Road. Uh, we know that in late evenings uh, at 2 a.m., if that passes, and I believe it will, uh, that the hope of getting enforcement uh, on a bad act in uh, the far reaches of, uh, of Westboro is virtually nil. And we also know that police, you know, simply don't respond to noise bylaw complaints. Uh, we can ask, but at one o'clock in the morning, they have, uh, they have other priorities. Um, the enforcement of noise at 1 a.m. is going to be critical for uh, the peace of mind of residents. Parking lot patios, right-of-way patios are in very non-traditional spots that are often in very close proximity to residential. They uh, adjoin backyards uh, that are residential. They are below the apartment windows of, um, of uh, residential units. And by going to 2 a.m., we are going to have noise problems if the bars and restaurants in some neighborhoods choose to take advantage of those hours. I I would ask that we make sure that the enforcement resources are there to deal with it. A single officer focused three nights a week in the Byward Market is simply not going to be able to respond to noise complaints that may arise in Wellington West or um, in uh, in Westboro uh, or even further afield. So folks, uh, if, we're, if we want to go to 2 a.m., let's enable that with the enforcement that we need um, in order to ensure that everyone is successful this season. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Anyone else wish to speak to the item? Councillor Fleury, do you want to wrap up? I'll just speak quickly. Oh, Councillor Menard, sorry. Thanks very much. I'll just speak very quickly to it. I support, uh, you know, uh, the moves to uh, a 2 a.m. opening uh, on our patios, and I do that reservedly. I said this at Transportation Committee as well. And uh, I think uh, Councillor Alicia and Terry also raised these issues at Transportation Committee, trying to find some middle ground to say, let's allow this, but let's also have uh, some of that discussion for families and how we can make sure we're mitigating some of the issues that, that may arise. And I think that was, that was a wise discussion. Uh, I supported this at committee, but I also raised those issues. And so I'm just hoping that, you know, this is a simple motion. We're not talking about a, a lot of extra here. It's, it's, uh, it's very minor. Um, and I think it would be helpful to put the motion up before we actually uh, vote on it. Uh, so that we can get that little extra bit of of, uh, of enforcement. Uh, I don't think that um, this is sometimes framed as, oh, you know, you're anti-business because you want to have some enforcement. Well, we're already having enf some enforcement. The staff have already said that, and, and that's one of the reasons I was able to to support the 2 a.m. previously. This this helps get us over that hump to make sure that uh, we're doing all we can to to mitigate some of the issues while still supporting um, uh, these businesses. So uh, I urge all uh, colleagues to support this. Okay, Councillor um, 
Does anyone else wish to speak before Councillor Fleury wraps up? No? Okay, Councillor Fleury. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you, members of Council, uh, for, uh, for engaging. Um, wanted, wanted to follow up on a number of points. Uh, I believe it was uh, Anthony DeMonte who spoke to Ottawa Police not responding to noise. We do have formal correspondence from Ottawa Police uh, in relation to noise responses. So that, that dates back now, Tony. How many years did uh, bylaw officially uh, formalize that? Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't remember off offhand, but it's been uh, for some time that uh, bylaw regulatory services has had the um, the responsibility to answer noise complaints as a primary. I think it was um, a former deputy that was responsible for that program that's no longer with us, actually. So it's been several years. Yeah. If, if they're open to revisiting it, I'm certainly uh, open as one city, one team effort. I think uh, that would certainly be uh, be in line with that. Um, in relations to uh, the follow-up uh, of committee, at committee, I, I, when I when the motion was presented and, and carried, I did speak that I would be working offline to bring a motion to council relating to making sure we met uh, the, uh, the 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 total of four resources which were presented to bring um, seven-day proactive enforcement for all right-of-way patios. And we heard from Okobia and the DIAs uh, that yes. They're supportive of 2 a.m. Um, yes, uh, there are the majority of operators are good, but yes, it's also important to have the right enforcement to inform and to enforce those who aren't following the rules. That's all we're saying here is seven. This is a 2 a.m. seven days a week, so it's important for us to be able to enforce this seven days a week as complaints come in. So I'll ask members for for their support. This is not about the buyer market. This is about the program. We have a program that is expanded to 2 a.m. citywide, and and it's expanded for seven days. And we just it's important to have um, when when your constituency calls because there's a uh, a complaint on a patio that the city is able to respond that same evening. So I I I, I will ask for your support. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rand. So I'll offer a couple of comments. Uh, first, it is about the byward market because that's what the motion says, primarily in the byward market. Um, before committee, the councillor went to staff and asked for more proactive enforcement of patio. Staff came back with a plan uh, under the leadership of Councillor Tierney at the um, Transportation Committee for a dedicated summer student to proactively monitor and enforce when patio issues actually occur from Thursday to Saturday. Let's remember this is in addition to the usual bylaw officers already patrolling in the market and uh, busy commercial areas on an ongoing basis. That was not enough for the councillor, and he now wants proactive enforcement at all times, which requires three additional students that staff don't believe we need. We heard that from our professional staff. Mr. DeMonte and Mr. Chapman said it's not necessary. The three strikes you're out regime we're putting in place is the toughest set of measures we brought before, brought forward to encourage good behaviour from restaurants and staff believe that this will lead to a high level of, of compliance. We also asked, where's the money coming from? And our treasurer clearly stated, we do not know all of the details of phase three safe restart program. So I'd encourage you, vote against this. And I heard some councillors talk about how they support the patio. So I hope they all get on board and support this initiative to help these businesses who have been some of the hardest hit as a result of COVID-19 in compliance, of course, with Ottawa Public Health. And we will talk with them um, continue discussions with the Ottawa police to see that they step up uh, their uh, role as well as bylaw officers. So I'd encourage members of committee to vote uh, against the motion and vote for the report. So yeas and nays on the flurry motion, please. Councillor Luloff. No. Councillor Hubley. No. Councillor Eglai. No. Councillor Menard. Yes. Councillor DeRuz? No. Conseil Clouchy? No. Councillor Meehan? Councillor Meehan? No. Councillor Tierney? No. Councillor Suds? No. Councillor Moffat? No. Councillor El Shantiri? No. Councillor Deans? Yes. Councillor Kavanaugh? Yes. 
Councillor Shirelli? Yes. Councillor Leeper? Yes. Conseil Fleury? Oui. Councillor Dudas? No. Councillor Harder? No. Councillor King? Yes. Councillor Kitts? No. Councillor Gower? No. Councillor McKenney? Yes. Councillor Brockington? No. Mayor Watson? No. Eight yeas, 16 nays. Okay, uh, on the report, carried. Okay. Just sent on two uh, A, Mr. Mayor. Sent on two by Councillor uh, Fleury. And, and myself. And 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 Section two A, Mr. Mayor. Two A, yeah. On two A. I think got that. Descending on two A, Fleury, McKenney, and uh, Leeper. Uh, Councillor Meehan, would you like to introduce motion to adopt reports, please? Councillor Meehan. I'm here that the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee Report 20, Finance and Economic Development Committee and Committee and Protective Services Committee Joint Report 1, Finance and Economic Development Committee Report 21, Planning Committee Report 38, Item 7 of Planning Committee Report 37, Transportation Committee Report 16, and the report from the city clerk entitled Summary of Oral and Written Public Submissions for Items Subject to the Planning Act Explanation Requirements at the City Council meeting of February 24th, 2021 be received and adopted as amended. On the motion, carried. Yeah. Motions of which notice have been previously given. Motion dont avis a été donné entièrement. Councillor Suds, uh, seconded by myself. Councillor Suds, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and uh, hopefully we can put this up on the screen as well. Um, I'll read through it since we didn't uh, last time. So whereas section 223.3 of the Municipal Act 2001 authorizes a municipality to appoint an integrity commissioner who reports to council and is responsible for performing in an independent manner various functions with respect to ethical matters, including overseeing codes of conduct for members of council, members of local boards, and certain matters under the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. And whereas subsection 223.31.1 of the Act requires every municipality to ensure that integrity commissioner's responsibilities are provided for, either by appointing its own integrity commissioner or by making arrangements for an integrity commissioner's responsibilities to be provided by an integrity commissioner appointed by another municipality. And whereas the city of Ottawa's integrity commissioner position was established in July, 2012, and has also delegated the independent statutory roles of the lobbyist register under section 223.11 of the act, and the meetings investigator under section 239.2 of the act. And whereas Robert Marlowe was appointed as the city's first commissioner on August 29th, 2012, and is currently appointed to a one year non-renewable term extension set to expire this August 31st of 2021. And whereas recruitment appointment and contract, contract administration for the city's integrity commissioner is conducted in accordance with the council approved statutory officer recruitment, appointment and contract administration policy and procedures. Therefore be resolved, uh, persuasive to the process set out in the city of Ottawa's statutory officer recruitment, appointment and contract administration policy and procedures, city council, one, thank Mr. Marlowe for the valuable service that he has undertaken for the City of Ottawa over his tenure as Integrity Commissioner. Two, direct the City Clerk to request that Mr. Marlowe participate in a voluntary exit interview with the City Clerk, City Clerk's designate, to be conducted in accordance with the process set out 
in the statutory officer recruitment appointment and contract administration procedures. Three, delegate authority to the city clerk to undertake a recruitment and appointment process for a new integrity commissioner in accordance with the criteria, principles, and remuneration schedule set out in attachment one. And lastly, number four, direct the city clerk to report back to council on the exercise of the delegated authority immediately following contract execution by way of a memorandum set out setting out information regarding the new integrity commissioner and the recruitment and appointment process that was used. Great. Well, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Suds. And uh, we'll have a, more of a formal opportunity to thank Mr. Marlowe for, I think, his nine years of service as our first integrity commissioner. So this starts the, the ball rolling to get uh, going with our next uh, hiring of our integrity commissioner. Any questions or comments? No, on the, the motion, carried. Adopted. Carried. 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 Uh, motions requiring suspension of the rules of procedure. Motion exigeant la suspension des règles procédures. Councillor Moffat uh, requires suspension with respect to uh, comments to the ministry on the um, waste production plan, I believe, on suspension. Carrie? Okay. Okay. Councillor Moffat, if you'd like to introduce your motion, that's now up on the, the screen. Councillor Moffat. Yep, just uh, bear with me as it's it's a two-pager. So whereas every year the City of Ottawa hosts household hazardous waste events to encourage residents to properly dispose of their corrosive, poisonous, or flammable household items with the goal of keeping these harmful items out of the landfill. And whereas through these depots, Ottawa's residents play an important role in helping to protect both the environment and the health and safety of waste collection workers. And whereas last year, these depot events allowed the city and its residents to that safely divert over 692 tons of hazardous materials. And whereas the Waste Diversion Act 2002 designates the municipal hazardous or special waste material and requires a waste diversion program be established and implemented for this category of waste. And whereas the Provincial Municipal Hazardous, hazardous or Special Waste Program is currently operated by Stewardship Material, Product Care Recycling and Automotive Materials Stewardship to help municipalities offset some of the cost of delivering MHSW disposal services under the WEA. And whereas in 2016, the province of Ontario introduced the Waste Free Ontario Act 2016, which provides the regulatory direction for the restructuring of the province's diversion policies from a product stewardship model to an individual producer responsibility model in support of the province's shift towards developing a circular economy. And whereas on April 12, 2018, the minister directed stewardship Ontario to wind up the MHSW program to enable the transition of hazardous or special materials to individual producer responsibility. And whereas the operation of the current MHSW program for all designated materials except single use batteries, which transitioned to IPR on June 30th, 2020, will wind up on June 30th, 2021, and be replaced with a new IPR regulation to be fully in effect on July 1st, 2021, as per the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act 2016. And whereas after extensive consultation with stakeholders, the ministry issued the proposed producer responsibility regulation for hazardous or special products on February 11th with the 45 day comment period ending March 28th, 2021. And whereas city staff are reviewing the draft regulations and are preparing briefings with members of council over the coming weeks, including anticipated impacts to auto residents and the city's operations and what is known and unknown at this point with the aim of answering any questions council may have, as well as consolidating a list of comments and or outstanding questions from both council and city staff subject matter experts and whereas the time between the release of the draft regulations and the end of the comment period will not allow city staff to adequate adequate time sorry, to prepare and submit draft comments for committee and council approval before submitting to the province by their deadline, therefore be it resolved that council delegate authority to the general manager of public works and environment services to work with the solid waste master plan council sponsors group to prepare and finalize comments on the draft hazardous and special products regulation on behalf of the city of Ottawa and be it further resolved that city staff be directed to provide council with a copy of the comments submitted to the province and provide an update to committee and council to highlight any notable changes between the draft regulations and final regulations once they are registered later in 2021. So the sponsors group is myself, it's seconded by Councillor Minard, and it's also in the sponsors group, as well as Councillors Laura Dudas and Eli Elshantiri. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Any questions or comments? Do you want me to read in French? Oui, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Adopté, carried. Carried. Thank you. Carried. 
Uh, the next motion requiring suspension of the rules of procedure is uh, by Councillor Fleury and McKenney with respect to demolition of 257 MacArthur Avenue uh, on suspension. Carried? Carried. Carried. Councillor Fleury, the floor is yours. Mayor, this is a typical demo permit motion. Do you want me to just be, read the therefore be it resolved? Sure. Uh, therefore, be it resolved that council approve demolition control for the existing building on the property subject to the following conditions. One, that property owner pay Hyde 3,472, including legal fees and HST, uh, which is the fee associated with the demo control application. Two, that until the time of the construction of the first replacement building, the registered owner shall landscape the property to the satisfaction of the general manager of planning, infrastructure, and economic development. The registered owner shall prohibit the use of the property for other interim uses and maintain the property in accordance with the property standards bylaw. And three, the landscaping of the property shall be finalized in collaboration with CSTA. Oh. I always forget those uh, four. The owner shall pay 100% securities for the city for the value of the landscaping, uh, the property with the securities to be released once these works are completed. Five, the owner agrees that the discretion of the general manager planning infrastructure and economic development department, a replacement building must be substantially completed within five years for the date of this approval. And in default thereat, the city clerk shall enter in a collector's role the sum of $5,000 for the residential dwelling to be demolished. Six, the registered owner shall enter into an agreement with the city of Ottawa to include the foregoing conditions and pay all costs associated with the registration of said agreement. At such time as the building permit is issued to redevelop the site and the replacement buildings in its place, the agreement will become null and void and will be released upon request of the owner. The owner shall pay all costs associated with the release of the agreement. At seven, the owner agrees that the demolition permit will not be issued and building cannot be demolished until such time the agreement reference herein has been executed and registered on title. And eight, this approval is considered null and void if the agreement is not executed within six months of council's approval. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see no hands up. On the motion carried. Carried. Okay. Uh, Councillor um, uh, Cloutier, uh, you have a notice of motion for private approaches Eastway Gardens. Uh, do you want to deal with that now? Because I think it's the same as Councillor Brockington and Eglai and others have brought up when there's road reconstruction. Uh, Are you Mr. prepared Mayor, to deal that with that now? Kind. If, if that's the will of Council, that would certainly st streamline my, um, my uh, community consultation that I have scheduled for March 24th. Okay, so on suspension. Carried. Carried. Councillor, uh, I want to introduce your motion with respect to the the alphabet streets, I think, the <laughs> avenues. The, the community of Eastway Gardens does not like it when we call it that. <laughs> um, the, but those are avenues, uh, N-O-P-Q-R-S-T. It is scheduled for um, uh, water and sewer uh, work uh, in 2021 and in 2022 and uh, some of the um, some of the um, driveways with our uh, are not in complete conformity uh, with the city's front yard parking restrictions yes. private approach bylaw and so the therefore be it resolved is very simple that council approved that in respect to the reconstructions of avenue N O P Q R S T and U, private approaches be reinstated as they were immediately prior to the reconstruction of these streets and i will also add to colleagues on council there have been no no uh, complaints uh, from neighbors uh, with respect to the current status of of those approaches Okay, uh, on the motion, carried, carried. 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 Are there any other motions requiring suspension of the rules of procedure? Any other notices of motion? Avis d'intention, avis d'intention de l'agent de vérification de la conformité réglementaire du train léger. Notice of intent for the uh, light rail in the annual report during the meeting of March 17, 2021 of the Transit Commission. Councillor Meehan, please. Councillor Meehan, I think you're on mute. There we go, I can hear you. That the bylaws listed on the agenda under motion to introduce bylaws, three readings be read and passed. Carried, adopté. A confirmation bylaw, Councillor Meehan, please. 
that the following bylaw be read and passed to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting of the 10th March 2021. Carried. Adopt A. Uh, Madam Deputy Clerk, any inquiries? Uh, Councillor Egli, uh, we'd ask you to say a few words in your capacity as Chair of Ottawa Public Health with respect to uh, the upcoming uh, St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Thank you, uh, thank you very much and, and colleagues uh, for allowing me to put on the, uh, the public health hat um, today. Um, this is our last public meeting um, prior to uh, St. Patrick's Day, which as we all know is uh, is a significant event in the city of Ottawa. People like to uh, get out and, and celebrate. Everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day in Ottawa. And uh, normally that's a great, a great thing. Um, and people really enjoy the opportunity. But again, uh, this year is different. Like it's different for just about everything in our lives. And so I just wanna take this opportunity to, to ask Ottawa residents to consider um, either celebrating St. Patrick's Day in some sort of a virtual way, whether that be listening to a, a concert online or, or sharing a drink virtually with friends, uh, or if they are going to go out, that they, they do uh, acknowledge and, and follow the uh, public health guidelines about how many people they should be going out with and um, physical distancing while they're out and, and everything that goes along with that. Uh, we would certainly ask that you do not organize uh, any kind of St. Patrick's Day party in, in your home. Uh, you know, we, we know uh, from a year now that most of the times when we have a spike, when we have virus spread, it comes out of some sort of a social event. So um, as tempting as it might be to get together with friends and family to, to celebrate that in, in, your, in your home, please don't do that this year. Um, and I would just ask my, my colleagues to, you know, share the message. Public Health will be providing further messaging as we get closer to uh, St. Patrick's Day. But I would, I would ask my colleagues just to, to please share that message uh, amongst their, uh, their constituents. And uh, I wish everybody a happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, certainly hope that uh, in 20, uh, uh, 2022 that we can all get together and have the parade and, and, and celebrate it uh, you know, close to one another. But this year we have to treat it differently. And, and I appreciate everybody's cooperation and collaboration uh, in doing that. The last thing we want while we're rolling out our vaccine program is to have a spike uh, in cases. So uh, thanks very much, Mr. Mayor and, and colleagues for the opportunity to speak to this matter. Thank you, and Council, uh, thank you for your uh, continued leadership uh, with Dr. Etches and the team over there. Uh, Councillor Meehan, uh, adjournment, please. My pleasure. That the proceedings of the City Council meeting of March 10th, 2021 be adjourned. Carried. Adopt A. And the media availability will, will start at 1225. On va commencer la conférence de presse à midi 25. Merci. Meeting adjourned.